Wow, man. Night of the Thumposaurus Peoples. I haven't heard that jam in a long time. Ah, memories. Flooding back. Night of the Thumposaurus Peoples appears on Mothership Connection. It's the fourth album by American funk band Parliament, released December 1575 on Casablanca Records. This concept album is often rated among the best Parliament funkadelic, um, funkadelic releases and was the first to feature horn players Maceo Parker and Fred Wesley, who had previously backed James Brown in the JBS. Mothership, uh, Mothership Connection became Parliament's first album to be certified gold and later platinum. The Library of Congress added the album to the National Recording Registry in 2011, declaring the album has had enormous influence on jazz, rock, and dance music. Right on. Concept. You see how they're careful with their words, dance music? Dance music crosses over that void between funk and disco. So the uh, National Recording Registry, they were very, very careful in um, their phrasing because it was a very, very heated thing back in the day. Man. Um, so concept. The album is held together by a loose, escapist, outer space theme. Describing the concept, George Clinton said, We have put black people in situations nobody ever thought they would be in, like the White House. I figured another place you wouldn't think black people would be was in outer space. Some funny shit. Or playing hockey. <laughs> oh, man. Or bobsledding. What the hell? I was a big fan of Star Trek, so we did a thing with a pimp sitting in a spaceship shaped like a Cadillac, and we did all these James Brown type grooves, but with street talk and ghetto slang." Unquote. The album's concept would form the backbone of P-Funk's concept performances during the 1970s, in which a large spaceship prop, would, uh, large spaceship prop known as the Mothership would be lowered onto the stage as part of Dr. Frankenstein's arrival. Dr. Frankenstein, sorry. BBC Music described the album as a pioneering work of Afrofuturism set in a future universe where black astronauts interact with alien worlds. Journalist Fraser McAlpine stated that as a reaction to an increasingly fraught 1970s urban environment in which African-American communities faced the end of the optimism of the civil rights era, this flamboyant imagination, and let's be frank, exceptional funkiness, was both righteous and joyful. The albums received many accolades, including being named TV Network VH1's 55th Greatest Album of All Time and number 276 on Rolling Stone's list of the 500 Greatest Albums of All Time. Vibe listed Mothership Connection in their Essential Black Rock Recordings list, and it was included in the 2005 book 1001 Albums You Must Hear Before You Die. Right on. Right on. Great album, man. And uh, yeah, I never thought of it so much, but it is a concept album. And this is a really, really great creative way of George Clinton to have fun with the black... Um, uh, identity at the time and to kind of, um, you know, I mean, there was a lot of stuff going on back in the day, a lot of serious shit, but you can also focus on a few things that was, um, in playing lightly, you know, and having, uh, fun, you know, you know, black people being in outer space, you'll never see a black person in outer space. And I remember uh, as a kid, man, uh, you know, people would sit around and have fun with the idea. Yeah, you know, you'd never catch a black person doing this. You'd never catch a black person doing that. I remember one time, man, one of uh, my buddies or one of my dad's buddies from camp was trying to convince him to go whitewater rafting. And my dad, man, as he's talking, my dad's eyebrows kept doing all of this crazy shit. The Rock has nothing on my dad where it comes to eyebrows. And my dad's eyebrows was telling you every single thing you needed to know. If his eyebrows could talk, it would be like, yo, there's no way that you are going to get my black ass out there 
white water rafting. There is just no way. And so my dad was saying, yo, man, you will never catch a black man in his right mind, white water rafting or uh, bungee jumping or doing any crazy, crazy shit. That's for white folks. We used to laugh about that. But now you got black hockey players. Now you got, uh, oh, was it Commander Sisko from Star Trek? You know, so it's um, one of those great things back then compared to now. It's it's some funny shit, you know, you gotta be a black person to, oh no, you don't have to be a black person to appreciate it. If you are, um, okay, I'm gonna get a little political, just a bit. I'm gonna lean on a few people. If you are so close-minded not to be able to have fun with yourself, your identity, um, then you're too tightly wound. This day and age, we are too tightly wound. Um, I actually had somebody say this shit to me. She said, do not refer to yourself as a black man. You are an African American. That is the professional and the political way of saying things. Oh my God. Yo, I laid into this lady and she happened to be in management. So <laughs> so she stormed off and tried to get me fired and all kinds of bullshit like that. It didn't go anywhere. But you know, we are too tightly wound. I will never, ever, ever be offended by being called a black person. I'm a black man. You know, my ass is black. So therefore, I'm a black man. So come on. We are getting a little bit too uptight about things. Same lady. I remember once um, we were setting up... Um, uh, I work in Veterans Affairs and we were setting up, um, you know, for a charity benefit and we were having uh, a really, really nice uh, charity benefit and uh, a part of it was catering and a dance function, you know, raising funds for the vets. And uh, so we were helping out in the kitchen and the chefs were telling us what to do with what and where to go and all this stuff. And so she picked up two boxes of potatoes and she put it over there. And so one of the chefs said, yo, wow. You are really, really strong. So she was smiling at it. And then uh, he said to the guys, he said, yeah, wow, you know, some of you guys can't even pick up two boxes of potatoes. And uh, she goes, what do you mean by that? He goes, oh, well, you're really, really strong. I mean, that's a 50 pound box of potatoes you picked up too. So you're really strong for a little lady. Oh my God. Those were the words right there that made, you ever see that division when your face falls and so, Right then, that chef knew that he was in for a world of hurt because she didn't talk to him for, um, oh God, it's got to be like a couple of weeks. And this poor chef was so uh, scared that he wouldn't even open the door for her anymore, you know, because he just didn't know where that division was. He, it was too late to apologize. He just... And you know, that nice chef with that smile and that outgoing persona switched that they changed forever. He would come in, he would go straight to his station, straight to his office. He would just do this, do this, do this. And then he would walk straight out the door at the end of the day, barely saying good night, barely saying good morning when he came in because he was just too scared to be himself and to be that outgoing person that we kind of knew and loved. Sad, isn't it? All because some people are a little bit too tightly wound. Man, we are too tightly wound in this day and age. Even got black friends being offended <clears throat> by saying, uh, you're a black person. Holy cow. Got people being offended by uh, little things, you know, Life is too short, there's too much going on in the world around us to be uh, dealing with petty little issues like that. People who are a little bit too tightly wound, people who are offended by what I just said. If you are offended by anything that I just said, then you are too tightly wound. You've got to find a way to unravel that shit, live in the now, and uh, have a little bit more of, um, I don't know, a tougher hide, something because life is too short. You live longer, life will be sweeter when you don't sweat the small stuff. That's my message to you, all right? So, all of this political shit coming from music, but you know what? 
This music is really, really charged with a lot of things like this. And I remember sitting at home listening to my parents and listening to their friends talk about certain issues, talk about the social thing, but also talking about how the music could uh, bring you together. Yes, the music had a lot of things in it that you could uh, listen to, but it also had the, the jive, it had the, uh, the funk, it had the groove, it had all of those elements to bring the masses and the classes together. So that's what I appreciate about the music. All of the other things, the, um, the, the political shit, it's all a distant second. But I have to get that out there. Because this music basically was addressing a whole bunch of things like that. Especially the black identity. Alright, that's enough of that sermon. So, that, y'all, is my reaction to this excellent body of work, man. Uh, Parliament, definitely an essential piece of the funk movement. And, uh, you know, just socially bringing masses and the classes together through music. This is a really, really excellent example. Um, most music out there, all or most music out there, has that element of bridge building, you know. Um, but yeah, this, this groove back in the day, back in the 70s, it's what a lot of people had. Um, and you know what? As much as some people might not like funk or they might not like disco or whatever the case is, uh, both of them had that great unifying function. And that's how I see it, you know? And there was always something to appreciate. You know what I mean? A lot of people like to keep their, their music separate. But you know what? Music, it'll break down those barriers and eventually um, uh, build those bridges if you allow it. You know what I'm saying? All right, man. So, Amy, thank you very much, man. Te uh, thanks for taking me back, uh, back in time a little bit. Uh, um, let me just check my notes here, man. Yeah, so, uh, got some reactions in the shoot I gotta get to, man. Uh, Rob, Alan, Jack, Jennifer, um, on this platform and then on the other platform, I've got a, um, a couple of documentaries I wanna hit up. Uh, I've got a Led Zeppelin, um, uh, bootleg from 1977, I believe it is, uh, I gotta get to. And a couple of other things um, on the Classic Rock platform. If you guys haven't checked it out already, the second was the first year anniversary of this channel. And I just did a year in review. So check that out, man. It's about half an hour. And it's just giving you an overview of what I plan on doing with the uh, platform going forward. And a little personal information about me, you know. So, um, yeah, check that out, man. Anyway, that is my reaction and review. Thanks again, Amy. Appreciate it very much. Hope you guys enjoyed this. Uh, pardon me for my little political banter at the back end, but I think it just had to be said. You know, it was the perfect time. So there you go. Anyways, man, have a good one. Take care. And I'll catch you in my next reaction. Peace.